welcome to The Flow. I am Doc Rocket, Community Manager here at ECAMP. And, and I'm Katie Fox. We're in the same spot again, three weeks <laughs> running. And today we are doing something really special, broadcasting live from ECAMP HQ. Well, HQ2. We HQ2. Got, two. We got two <laughs> HQs. <laughs> So it's fun to be in the in the home office again. I love being here because I feel like we get more work done when all of us are together. Yep. Uh, please do not yell at me, people who enjoy working at home. I enjoy working at home. So does Katie. But it is fun to get the team together. And uh, Mr. Cameron Junkie is here. So is our support guy, Mr. Tyler over there. What the? Feverishly knocking out your tickets. So if you have a support question, ask it now because I know Tyler is right here. We can we'll live we'll live read them out loud. <laughs> we're in live support <laughs> with Tyler over there chilling on the couch. So uh, we're going to start this podcast here. What we want to do is remind you that the, the live recording live in front of a studio audience, a studio audience today of three. <laughs> it happens every Tuesday. 12 p.m. Eastern. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be able to have your questions answered or just see how it all works. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Kurt. You can just stop <laughs> in and, you know, be right in the chat. We're on YouTube. So hit our YouTube channel, subscribe, and then make sure you come to the live tapings. Yeah, absolutely. They're a lot of fun. And it's a great way to, to not only ask your questions, but see some behind the scenes, uh, you know, really be able to engage and get to know the community a little bit better. All right. This is kind of cool. It looks like we are in there like swimwear. So let's dive in with the old podcast here. What's happening today, Kate? Today, we're talking about two similar related topics. The first is why you should be adding in video and live video. We hope we're going to sell you on live video <laughs> into your podcasting workflow. And because we are right here in the week of Leap Into Podcasting, our virtual event, which is taking place on Thursday and Friday, we have a special bonus episode here of The Flow that we're doing, and we are bringing on a guest to talk all about camera confidence, because I feel like that's the big sticking point when you're trying to deal with adding in video, especially if you've been doing the podcasting thing for a bit and you've been just rocking the audio. Last week, we were talking with Laura from Shure. Shout out to Laura. So cool. Hi, Laura. <laughs> And Laura um, does just an audio podcast. And so we're here to convince Laura and all of the Lauras out there that you need to add on video to your podcast. But I know that some of the, the pain points that are there surround gear and technology. And then the other big pain point is like, I don't feel all that confident looking into a camera. I don't know how I'm going to look. I don't like how I look, all of that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to be chatting with today with Rosie. And so here's the thing to remember too, gang. The best thing to do is just realize you're born looking like this and go for it. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no way to go back and do anything unless you have um, really good um, plastic surgery, which I wouldn't suggest is kind of expensive. You can spend that money on gear. So I just accepted the fact I look funny and call it a day. Keep going. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's go. Well, let's that point, let us bring on Rosie. Hey, Rosie. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Hello. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. I selfishly, this is super fun because you sent me, I'm not, I'm looking at the wrong camera already. You <laughs> sent me an email a while back after our last leap into live event. And you were like, Hey, I really would love to be involved. And so it's been neat this year because now that we have the podcast, we can do these like pre-events that we can then take this video and roll it up into the replay session so that all of our attendees on Thursday and Friday will get to just hear all of the wisdom and all of the extra. And it's in a podcast format. So what better way to teach about podcasting? Than correct. 100% correct. I just enjoy the fact that we've had guests the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. it, it adds a, I don't know, it just adds a different level. I feel like it makes you level up when you can bring in the guests <laughs> and then have, you know, epic conversations with the guests. So yeah. there's that. Huge thanks to all of our guests who have been patient with us because we've been like on the road or on location or in not our usual spots the last uh the these last few interviews we've done so a lot of a lot of patience with Rosie we're like we were running a little bit late and then we had to deal with some audio issues so thank you for being patient with us but that's what we get from being cute with the three camera setup today I but know. it looked good it looks amazing i did just notice one thing but i won't talk about it right now <laughs> Well, Rosie, I am thrilled you're here and Doc hates this question, but for, for those listening at home or watching live in our studio audience, do you want to just let us know a little bit about 
who you are and how you got into this whole video camera confidence world. Sure. So my name is Rosie Faulkner and I'm a video coach. And how I came into this world, I wanted more exposure. So I decided to add video to the long list of the other things that I was doing. And like most people, I had no social media presence. So getting established and trying to be on camera was a huge, 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 huge thing for me. But I persevered. I went to my local public access station and I started taking classes and I started a TV show. And after that, I was like lights, camera, action. And I just pushed myself. I also remember my first time and I was just scared as hell. Um, If I could just be honest, I was super, super (laughs) scared. And I just remembered... um, you know, just coming out and just seeing the full crew of people. And I was just overwhelmed and I had to excuse myself and go to the bathroom, take some deep breaths. And then I came back and did it. And each time it got better and better and better. And then I gained confidence. So I decided to help other women out there because it's so many of us that if it's your um, company, if it's just you have a strong um, passion for a topic, you need to add video to your portfolio. So there you Yeah, go. absolutely. And I, it's, <laughs> I love that. I love that your focus has been uh, on women, not, not to gender profile, but as women, I think we are a little bit more hard on ourselves. <laughs> than our yeah. male, than our you guys are harder on each other. It's oh, therefore yeah. harder on yourself. Guys do not care. Guys don't normally look at another guy and go, Hey, you look cute today. Or Hey, you look <laughs> ugly today. We just, we don't care. We just do not care. We will tell yeah, our friends. So there's insecurities. a Oh, no, they do. But I'm saying we don't point them out to each other like that. Yeah. We're less brutal in that sense. We'll tell you that you got spinach in your teeth or, you know, you're looking a little fluffy or something. But we don't normally get into the, you know, I guess like nitpicking thing. And again, everybody does their own thing slightly differently. I just know from my friends and I, we just accept the fact that we're all ugly. And the one person that's pretty boy is will be known as pretty boy. And that's the way it works. Yeah, there you go. I, I... In our case, it's Tyler. <laughs> I I love what you said there, Rosie, because I think that it, it comes down to committing that you're going to do it and then also reminding yourself that you you're there to do it because you are you have a purpose. Right. So you're you're adding value. You're engaging or connecting with your customers. Maybe it's really important for your business. You need to be able to get out there and grow your business and build your business that way. I think that's equally relatable in the podcasting space where many people whether they, you know, started off like right kind of at the beginning of the pandemic, or maybe they, you know, they've been podcasting in the, in the audio space for a while. It, you know, they worked so hard to build this following, but really to be able to kind of take it to that next level and foster and engage their community and their fan base, yep. they're going to need to step out of that. <laughs> this of the well, one other thing that I think is important too, is this is something I try to coach my people into is that it's not about you. It's about the audience. So your ego trips about yourself is maybe stopping you from providing the impact in the world that you want to provide over vanity, which is not even nice. So it's better to like go on your mission and help people out. Even if you had like, you know, Something sticking out the side of your head, whatever. Like <laughs> Hellboy. If you had a Hellboy thing, you're still good because your mission is probably bigger than your scar. <laughs> yeah, but oftentimes people can't get over that. So for my clients, I tell them to make a list. You know, what can you change about yourself? Because honestly, sometimes they want to, you know, lose weight before they jump in front of them, and that's holding them back. Um, so make a list and the things that you can change, change them, change you know, them. the things that you can't, you have to accept them. You know, this is how you were born. Like you said before earlier, if you want plastic surgery, I never think that that's the extreme. That's always the extreme. But, you know, some people are, you know, want to do that to make them look a certain way. But I always say make a list and then change the things that you can and for some people, it's really deep. They may need to seek therapy because. I can't really help them. You know, I can mm-hmm. help them build their confidence. But if it's deep rooted, then they may need to go to a professional to um, figure out what's going on and then come back and see me. But 
I say accept it too. My voice people said something about that. I don't care. What am I going to do about my voice? I mean, this is what it is. I'm that here is to actually one of the harder things to change actually is your voice. <laughs> Even with voice training and things like that, I never went to the broadcasting style classes or whatever, because I always thought the guys in my radio station that did that, I felt bad for them. So, for instance, you come in on your normal day, six days a week, you're in a great mood, your Columbia School of Broadcasting Voice is on point, right? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the flow. I am Doc Rock, your community manager. And then tomorrow, you get in a fight with your significant other, and then you're just not feeling it. And then you come in. What's up, y'all? Um, this is Doc, W-E-K-C-A-M. Uh, we're going to be hitting slow jabs today. Uh, call in for your request. It just sounds horrible. So I never did the fake radio voice because you can't maintain that every day. Your normal voice as is, is fine. And even after I had my throat surgery, it slightly changed my voice. In my head, none of my people noticed it. But to me, I was freaking out. I was super mad at the doctor because she told me my voice wasn't going to change. I can hear it. Most people don't even know the difference. Yeah. The cool thing about camera confidence is that in this new space, especially in the live streaming space, and you know, if you're starting again, if you're starting a podcast with live streaming, like what we're doing here with the flow, it really is more about being authentic and yourself and engaging with people than it is about most other things. I mean, people are really showing up to be able to hear what you have to say, not what, you know, some celebrity has to say. They're not tuning in anymore to a lot of the new shows or radio shows or bigger productions that they used to, people are spending more time on YouTube, on all of these platforms to be able to connect with real people like them that they can relate to. That takes a lot of pressure off. So that hopefully makes that list a little bit shorter for everyone out there who has a gigantic list of reasons why they're apprehensive or they're not quite there yet. And I agree. Once they start doing it, they see that people are not commenting. I mean, let's let's rip cyberbully is real. Cyberbullying is real. And I think that most people read comments and they feel like somebody's going to come on their platform or their page and they're going to receive all of that. But yes, you may, but most times you're not going to get that. Like you said, people are coming for your expertise. They could care less. And most of the time it's you in your head about, oh my God, my hair doesn't look right. Or, oh my God, you know, um, my background. No one cares about that. Can you provide value is the thing. Yes, yeah. I 100% agree. I see if you was coming on and telling somebody how they can increase that bank account in the next three days, they don't care what you look like. You could be coming in sideways, crooked, hot breath, like whatever. Nobody cares because it's about you. And my hair always looks the same. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's amusing, especially so there's a few a few kind of fun podcasts that I listen to just for kicks. Uh, most of them are true crime because that's just the space that I'm in these days. But I do laugh sometimes that in a space like that, where most people are listening to that genre of podcast for uh, like for a release or for entertainment or for just to chill and relax. The amount of times where I hear my favorite hosts say things like, oh, we couldn't add video on because, you know, we're just here up in the pod lab and we're wearing our pajamas and like, we're just hanging out. And I was like, I feel like people would really relate. Oh my goodness. Oh, sitting on the sofa with you and hanging out yes. and feeling like they're behind the scenes, even if they didn't do it every single time, even if they did these kind of, you know, pop-up special events or incorporated more video in the things that you can hear it as they're justifying it, the, th the things that they're saying. Thing. Yeah, but it's those things that probably make it more special and more relatable. When I was doing my DJ parties, one of the best parties of the year, we would do something called the Pajama Jammy Jam, where everybody had to come in their PJs. And those were always the best parties. Like everybody absolutely loved it because it gave you a little bit normal you. You're not coming like overly flossed out with a nice fit. It also gave me a chance to wear my Tasmanian Devil onesie. Not the with the big, with the big feet, you know the Tasmanian feet they used to have at the Warner store. Yo, I used to rock them joints in the DJ booth. All right, cool. all right. So next, next live taping of the flow, Doc and I are going to show up. We'll bring Rosie back. We'll all wear our like pajamas. Pajamas. Yeah. Party. No, but I was yeah. But with that, it sets you apart. Just like if they would have came on with their pajamas, you know, you don't want to be like everybody else. So like yeah, you said, right. if they did it occasionally, that would set their podcast apart from the sea of other people. 
And people yeah. don't think like that, you know, and it's fine. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think too, in particular, and Doc, we'll, we'll probably do a whole episode on this specific topic, but with players like YouTube moving into the podcasting space, it's going to become necessary really soon. So, you know, for everyone that's kind of been sitting on the edges or, you know, or they have a live show, but they haven't gotten, you know, into the podcasting space and pulled the other side, they haven't pulled the audio out and done it that way. It's coming. It's coming for you. <laughs> I'm just, all, all in my head, I'm going, living on the edge. It's just, you know, my musical tune. It's just kicking in. And then you have B-roll to use, yeah. you know, yes. reels, different things like that. And you can, you know, not just have your audio clips, but you can have more content. So look at it that way. It's it's bringing more content your way so you can distribute it however you like. Absolutely. So I have a question yeah. for you, Rosie. Um, what particular exercises would you recommend to someone that is, you know, sort of working on that confidence gym? For in podcasting in particular, just turn it on. Just turn the camera on. You may not use it. You don't have to use it. But just, you know, angle, uh, position a camera and just have it on, you know, and then just watch it and see, okay, what did I like? Maybe I should position it this way, kind of critique it and keep moving the camera around till you find, you know, a location that works. And eventually you may want to say, okay, I like this. You know, I could use, like I said, this audio clip, but then they actually could see my facial expression because I was saying something that meant something. And so people right. can connect with you better. So I would just say start off slow with um, positioning, uh, turn on a camera at first and don't use it, get comfortable and then, you know, work your way to, you know, putting it out there. I like that concept. And, you know, what's funny is if you think about it back in the day, a couple of movies that come to mind is if you remember Warriors, there's other movies that have that. Well, all you had was the, the microphone and the lips. And you really see nothing else. You see like a little bit of nose, chin, lips, and they're like, oh, warriors, can you come <laughs> out and play? Oh, uh, it's right? a season. Right? <laughs> so, like, you could even do a tight, as it's called in the game, where you didn't even see your whole face. It could literally be just, you know, bottom half of your face down, especially if you're having a conversation about something that's a little bit mindful, a little bit insightful almost a little bit of ASMR type, you know what I mean? So you, like you said, play with the angles and see what you come up with. And I think you're right. That's a great second angle to cut away when you want to talk about something, but you don't want your, your facial expressions yeah. to show maybe your true feelings of it. Cause you want to leave the audience left over, just pull in tight to the face where they can't really see your eyes. Cause the eyes is what's telling the truth, right? Yeah. Or time lapse, right? Because you could just position it and, hey, want to see what I do when I'm recording the podcast? It doesn't have to be, like you say, in your face, but you can record it, use that time lapse is going so fast. And, you know, they're seeing you, but they're not. Um, That will be another way. Yeah, absolutely. I think being able to play and experiment with different kinds of video is really huge. For, the, for our event later this week, we've been playing with an app called Bali. I will admit, don't come at me, volley people. <laughs> it was one of those apps that I downloaded on my phone. Like, you know, I'm always the like, sure, I'm all in. Let's check this app out. Let's see how it works. It is an asynchronous video app. So it allows you to, you've probably seen, if not volley, something similar where you can basically send video or audio or text notifications back and forth to everyone that's in your space, into your volley space. So we set one up for Leap into Podcasting. And even just getting into the the practice of creating those short form videos is super helpful in getting yourself more comfortable with thinking about, oh, I'm capturing this as a video instead of a photo. Oh, I'm capturing this as a video instead of sounding, sending an audio you know, note across or instead of texting or typing, doing it in that different way. Uh, Doc, you were saying last week that when we were at all these different events, you, again, the one thing that totally resonated with me, you're like, just turn off your camera because I'm always like taking nine million photos. You were like, literally have your phone open in, the, in video so that you're forcing yourself into getting into that habit. Yes, yes, that is key. So for instance, nowadays, everybody went to the mat complaining about the fact that Instagram is going video forward. Like they really don't care about your pictures no more, which is cool. So if you know that, 
and you're doing social because you're trying to grow your channel, be discovered more, whatever, go into your phone app and set it to either remember the last mode you were in or set it to go straight to video instead of photo. And know that if you press video first, you can hit the little white button in the corner and take pictures. Okay. So you can kill two birds with one rock, if you will. And don't kill the birds, by the way. It's about to add me for that normal statement, but hey, you know what it is. So yeah, just set it up so that you're always recording that video and then throw these reels up. And man, reels are so much fun and it allows you to gain confidence quicker, right? I see people come in and my man Rich is here. Hey, Rich. Rich did something really cool. And I mentioned this before. We were doing Vlogmas, and there was just a day where Rich didn't have anything. He literally turned on the camera to stay consistent and say, hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Hope you're having a great day. I got nothing. Merry Christmas. And he kept yes. going. But that in itself became the gym. Like, it is canon in our circle. So sometimes you could just pop on and go, I'm having one of those days. Are you having one of those days? Send me a comment and let me know. And then your people would be like, girl, let me explain it to you. Fan, yes. These kids, let me call it, right? You know, so people would join in because you're not the only one having one of those days. Yeah. So, Rosie, I'm interested. To, so you are start with a list, which is great advice, and then get into kind of just the act of turning on the camera and, and forcing yourself to create video. What kind of advice do you have for people who have taken those first couple of steps? They've got there, they've got on video but they're, they're struggling and they, you know, they're, they're still feeling like a little anxious or maybe their audience isn't growing as quickly as what they want. What's kind of the, what are some of the next level tips to help them stay in front of the camera and stay consistent when things may not necessarily be going as smoothly as they thought? It could be other things. It could be your messaging. It could be a ton of things, but in regards to video, just keep at it. Um, a lot of people, they don't like the way they look. You know, but the more that they start shooting, uh, they feel comfortable because, again, it's this is what you're born with. This is what it is. And you get comfortable. You're like, OK, I'm used to hearing my voice. I'm used to seeing my face like this. Um, maybe I should uh, wear makeup or maybe makeup is just too much for me, you know, but just keep doing it. And watching your replay is huge because you learn so, so much. Um, about good things and bad things. I know a lot of people always go to the bad things, but also point out the things that are going well. Um, just like you may go on a rant, just like Doc said, maybe your audience like that. So maybe you should incorporate more of those type of videos into your schedule. So just replays, keep trying different things, but keep at it. Yes, 100%. Now, here's a good tip as well. If you know that you want to get this out, but you're, you're still trying to get over this camera thing, you can do the over the shoulder shot as well. So in that case, imagine if you will, I had this camera here and you're really looking at the back of my melon, the microphone and the mixer. And that could be your whole shot in the beginning and, and as you slowly gain confidence, whatever, too. So you can try angles like that. You see that a lot when you they're showing the radio station person or because, unfortunately, Katie and I watch a lot of murder mysteries. Um, the dispatcher, you don't always see the dispatcher's face. You normally see the back of their head and then the 911 screen, like 911 caller, how can I help you? Oh, my God, my wife just fell down the steps. No, nah, Stephen, you pushed her. Bruce is, Bruce is never going to hang out with people are all about the murder. It was HBO show uh, <laughs> with Colin Firth, and it was just funny because he never plays a, a Does anything he never... but the romantic guy. So it was a trip to see him in that particular role. It's, it's called The Staircase. It's pretty dope. Watch. It's true. It's true. But yeah, no, I think that, they, again, going back to the camera angles, it's great. I mean, there's tons of, of you that are watching in the studio audience right now and maybe listening at home, and you're like, okay. Like I'm, you know, I, I, I teach piano lessons. I am a woodworker. I, you know, I do things that you don't need to see my face or maybe that's not what people are wanting to connect with. It's okay to show, to just do an overhead shot. Oh, hands in the pants. pants. I, learned, I learned that from Kathy Hester. Cookbook <laughs> author and Cookbook author. There you go. She calls those videos hands in the pan and they work really well for crafting, woodworking, piano playing, instrumentation, mm -hmm. all of the above. So yes, you can just show your hands until you gain the confidence to put your face on camera. And if you like me and have a face for radio, steal with it. 
Yeah, there is an amazing uh, YouTuber out there called This Old Tony, like absolutely awesome woodworker. He's funny. His videos are like, see just a huge amount, amount of views on YouTube and he never shows his face. In fact, so much so that there, I think he's made maybe one, maybe one or maybe two videos where he's actually on camera and it's like almost jarring for his like dedicated fan base. They're like, whoa, we can't, we're not, they're so used to, you know, it's like listening to your favorite radio person or podcast person who hasn't stepped into video yet. You're kind of like, you have an assumption of what they look like until you see them. So, I mean, you may not never need to show your face on yep. camera and still have a really effective channel and still be taking advantage of that. You know, video. And you go back to the olden days, right? When I first saw what Casey Kasem looked like in real life, I was like, <laughs> that little guy has all of that voice. Hi, this is Casey Kasem, an American top 40. And I was like, no way that all of that noise came out of that little man. <laughs> But you were curious. You were curious. Yeah, it, was almost, it was almost some life down. Yes. Yeah. So every now and then, I think you should switch it up. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Oz or the Wizard of Oz, or for us, it was the Wiz, um, the <laughs> even better version. Because, yeah, you just didn't know, like, things or the Mechanical Turk. You know, when you go to these old movies and plays and stuff, you realize that oftentimes it's not what you expect. So I think it's good to do the surprise reveal even, like give yourself a deadline. I think the problem with things that people give themselves to change, they don't often give themselves a deadline. So mm -hmm. uh, we talked about this before, Christmas Clatter, Ty, who's in the chat today, uh, we gave ourselves a deadline to get back on our podcasting horse. And, you know, it was, it was nice because I had a buddy to take the challenge with, so I wasn't by myself. Yeah, joining a community or um, finding a friend or, you know, being not alone can go a really long time, a really long way to helping you get back into it or into it initially. <laughs> I like seeing the chat to see my vintage people that also grew up, <laughs> people of a certain vintage, I have to say, listening to Casey Case. And Rosie, you're not old enough for that. <laughs> I know the name. <laughs> That's what I mean, because I definitely remember Casey Case. <laughs> Actually, 86 years old. Everyone, I just look amazing. For me. You're almost the same as Paul. Paul and I are at it. Well, I we we are nearing the end of our time, Rosie. So I just wanted to see if there is any advice that you would give. It doesn't necessarily have to be specific to podcasting, but you know, as people who are just getting started on building their confidence with getting in front of the camera, or maybe they've just taken those first steps. What um, what advice do you have for folks that? I know we've covered a lot of, of the like, just do it. You've got this, but. But that's, that's, I echo that message. Just keep going because that is the fastest way to um, bond with your community. They want to see what you look like, even if you do it occasionally, but work those angles, but ultimately try to show your face, get used to hearing your voice, get used to seeing um, your face on camera and you will be fine. Uh, if I can do it, you can do it. Just keep going, watch your replays and get better and better. You will be fine. I guess I'm gonna have to watch my replays. That's one thing I, really don't, I don't do, or I, I do it very like on double speed. <laughs> Why? <laughs> See, I'm that I'm that for part partially because I never have enough time. We create an insane amount of video, and so I'm always like just moving. For me, it's less of a camera confidence thing and more of a I just need to get through this quickly. But um, yeah, I should I should do more because I think it, it'll give you more feedback on how you can improve. Right. So I listened to our interview with Aubrey yesterday. Yeah. Just to hear again, like how we're doing, how we're coming. I always listen to my own cast. Sometimes I do listen on faster when I'm just looking for a particular part, but it does help. I was just reminded by someone in our live taping, which is why you should come to the live tapings every Tuesday at 12 noon. So Casey Kaysen was shaggy. Uh -huh. I just, I loved me shaggy when I was a kid, right? <laughs> so if you watch Scooby-Doo, not shaggy wasn't me. Uh, that's a different shaggy. Uh, that was Casey Kaysen. <laughs> I just know that. Yeah. 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 Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I know. I feel like a lot of the um, radio personalities and voice actors there is a ton of overlap in that space and yeah. lots of things that you wouldn't necessarily think of because it is in that audio space. You know what I just heard today, which I find absolutely epic. James Earl Jones is retiring from being Lord Vader. No. What one, one time for the Star Wars no. people. 
<laughs> a moment of silence. Okay. But here's what's so dope. Because he has so much recordings of him as Darth Vader. Oh, no, they don't even need him? Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. So they're going to basically use the script technology. And he has signed over the license for his voice in the Vader character. And they have enough audio analog and digital from the many, many years of him being Darth Vader that they're going to be able to basically generate that voice, not dissimilar from what we do in the script when you read the script. But of course, Disney is putting their own AI team on it and they have a heck of a lot more money. Uh, sorry, Harmony. <laughs> maybe, sorry, script. You know, sorry, the script, Kevin, <laughs> my people. Um, they're going to throw all the money at it in order to keep the Vader voice as Vader as possible. And it's going to be AI generated. And I just think it's incredible. But that's a cool thing for people when you have an actor like James Earl Jones. No one was going to be able to replace it. I'm sorry. He's irreplaceable. Sorry, Beyonce. <laughs> this is going to continue to get Star Wars Wars that engine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, he's also getting up there. He's about the same age as Katie and Paul. So <laughs> true. Oh, if, if, if at some point we no longer have Sir James Earl, we still people still get to enjoy that. And I think it's incredible. The idea, this is super corny, but as soon as I heard that, I was like the idea of me taking my lessons and stuff that I'm teaching my people now and save them in the format that my niece can listen to when she goes into the business world, me being a business coach, me being a content creation coach, and for her to hear it from me as me, even if somebody has to update it in a document, it will stick to her brain differently because she's been hearing my voice since the day she was born. Yeah. It would be incredible. It's a little, it's a little spooky. <laughs> it's, inc it's incredible. Nonetheless. It's incredible. Nonetheless. I do want to point out one last thing before we jump into Q and a here is, uh, Dr. Elo in the chat. I know we're calling out the chat more than we should be for our at home listeners. We're just trying to make give you some incredible FOMO. <laughs> so you have to go to us. But uh, but Dr. Elo is saying that uh, it's so funny because we're all used to and don't seem to have much problem other than maybe eye rolling about it. But we don't have much problem with sitting on a Zoom meeting or a Microsoft Teams meeting or conveying and communicating on video in that way. But the second when it's like when it really matters, quote unquote, you know, when we're podcasting or when we're creating live video, it's that moment that we feel this rush of panic. And it's that it's that kind of presentation standing in front of the classroom as a high school student fear of someone saying something or, you know, or thinking that we're less than how we want to be portrayed. So it's it's overcoming that, as Doc would say, it's not real. Anyway, it's all in your head. It's all in your head. Yeah, just roll. You, that's why I agree with Rosie. Roll tape all the time and then look at it. You'll yeah. find that you start becoming better in your Zooms and your team meetings and all of that as well, mm -hmm. because you're you're leveling up a skill or upgrading a skill, as Mr. Cameron Junkie Shirt says over there. <laughs> so. Oh, and steady. OK. All right. Hey, we're, yeah, we, obviously we're time for questions, but <laughs> studying, studying uh, public voices like James Earl Jones, like listening to. Yes how people speak, how people present TEDx talks, all of that is that's a that's great training for seeing how, you know, getting more comfortable and seeing how you can sound and look on I camera. used to go to the library and check out the audio tapes. Now you can just do them digitally, but of good speeches, good orators, because mm. that was something that I knew I wanted to be good at. So I would listen to Martin Luther. I would listen to the Kennedy brothers, I would listen to these great orators and just sort of find their pauses and their stops and the way that they mm -hmm. emphasize certain words. And Stephen Fry, to me, is one of the best. Morgan Freeman, also on my top five, Dead or Alive. Um, so James Earl Jones is also in that top five, Dead or Alive. So, yeah, this is one of those things where you listen to these people speak and you you sort of start to pattern that and learn it. And uh, from the female camp, it's a uh, Katie Couric, Michelle Obama, uh, Bob Costas is not a female, but I forgot Bob. Five. He's in my top five that are alive. Uh, I, I got one more, which I'll tell you later. But yeah, I would go through and even listen to the good female speakers, and you know, try to pick them. Them uh, and Margaret was an incredible speaker as well. So I like to listen to old speeches and sort of hear what they say. But don't try to be them. Get the tips. Oh, yeah. But yeah, still don't lose yourself. Because that's the most important. 
yeah, yeah, be yourself. yeah that's see that's you say lose yourself and i'm thinking my spaghetti <laughs> like you know my musical terrestrial is burning right now <laughs> you got it lose with it. Right? Yes. Yes. We're, we're punchy today. Man, you know, just, I was like, do not start singing Eminem, Doc. Don't do it. Don't do it. You actually were not alone in that one. It's just like, I gotta just, I gotta go. Oh, Vincent Price, Miss Eileen. Yes, Vincent Price is another glorious voice. I love his voice when I was a kid. One of my favorites. So yes, very good. Oh my goodness. Well, Rosie, we super appreciate you taking the time to come on. We're so, I'm so excited. Half of the fun of this podcast for me is getting to dive into the replay video and into the script as I'm working my way through the transcript, pulling out all those like sound bites and those nuggets and being able to get them back out in front of everyone. So tons of ones in this episode that I can't wait to pull out. Yeah, he's going to be get great. As sound bites in front of everyone and get in front of the leap in a podcasting audience. If you're listening, you've already missed it. You've already missed leap in a podcast because it's next week when the audio will come out for this episode, but you can still get replay tickets. So even though you've missed it, you haven't totally missed it. <laughs> you can have this episode as well as all of the amazing speakers. Uh, if you swing over to leap into podcasting.com and you can always catch the flow. Yes. You can catch the flow. You can always catch the flow. Always catch the flow. Hey, uh, check this out. Before we go, Rosie, could you please tell people where they can find more about Rosie or follow all the coolness that you cool in? Yeah, absolutely. You can um, join me on social media. Um, Faulkner underscore Rosie is basically everything on Facebook and also Instagram. Visit my website if you are in need of coaching, um, rosiefaulkner.com. And check out my YouTube channel. I have tons of free content. Um, that's, again, Rosie Faulkner on YouTube. So come see me, and I will get you confident on camera. That is cool. Now, family, I do want to remind you of one thing. When you are doing things like recording your podcast, especially having on an epic guest like Rosie, one of the things you need to make absolutely sure is that your internet just doesn't decide to internet whenever you need it to work. <laughs> Sometimes it will just tank in the middle of your recording. And that's what we here like to call a stream emergency. Let me tell you how to protect yourself from a stream emergency. There is a wicked cool application. And now that I'm in Massachusetts, I can say wicked cool. And it is called Speedify. For a really, really low price, you can take Speedify, install it in your phone, your computer, your devices, whatever. And if you should have a dip in internet, it kind of saves you. Last year, during the conference, our internet in the office ate it and we didn't even know. The only way I knew is because Speedify kicked in and took over and ran the whole conference. Later that day, I went to go watch a Raiders game on my phone and it was like, nope, you used up all of your internet. And I was like, how did I use up all of my internet? It turns out the entire second day of the conference ran from my iPhone because Speedify was selected as the backup connection for my Mac was to use my iPhone connections as a backup internet connection just in case something happened in the middle of the conference. Speedify came to the rescue, saved an entire conference, and nobody freaking knew except me and AT&T. So do yourself a favor. If you stream a lot, travel a lot, because it also acts as a VPN, like to watch career movies that you can't see here. I will tell you about that differently. Uh, make sure you check out Speedify. It's super, super easy to use. It's a lot of fun. They are absolutely fantastic. And we thank them for being sponsors of today's show here at The Flow. We sure do. And if you are coming to Leap Into Live, then you will be able to get a special discount for them. So hope to see everyone there or in the replay. If you're listening and you're like, shoot, I missed it. You didn't miss it. <laughs> you can get just in the replay and still take advantage of that great promo code. That is awesome. Okay, so what we're going to do is close this out. Say goodbye to you guys. Q&A people, hang out. We will answer your questions. And if you're like, hey, man, I want to ask those questions, but I'm not at the live taping. Number one, bring yourself to the live taping. Number two, catch us on our Volley channel, which we will have in the show notes. You can ask your questions on Volley, or you can send us an email at flow at ecam.com. That's flow, F-L-O-W at ecam, E-C-A-M-M dot not D-O-T, just a dot, com, C-O-M. Make sure you come and check that out. And, of course, you can always reach out to us anytime. 
at floatecap.com <laughs> or make sure you subscribe to the cast and leave us a review on the iTunes if you so do incline to. <laughs> Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week. Aloha.